This is eHobbyist blog, a log of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. These eHobbyist blog videos were suspended a bit longer than I had anticipated. What happened was Cassiopeia, our director, encountered some medical issues that needed to be attended to, and as everyone knows, you cannot have a video without a director. Cassiopeia has recovered from her surgery. We can resume these eHobbyist blog videos uh, concerning the development of a prototyping system essentially the development of an electronics lab in a box. When last seen, I was developing a variable positive power supply based on an LT3080 chip and failed miserably. Not only didn't it work, but the perf board was erratic and totally useless. Now, I'm sure there's uh, something I was doing that was wrong. Apparently, people actually do use this chip, and if it doesn't work, well, go ahead and blame the user. It's a standard operating procedure, and perhaps at some point in the future, I can figure out just what exactly it was that I was doing wrong and uh, resume my experiment. But for now, I've discarded the notion of using the LT3080, and I went back to the Plan A variable positive power supply based on an LM720 chip. What I did was I redid the, the printed circuit boards. The original printed circuit boards were constructed based on a TO220 footprint and I needed to use some copper foil tape to adapt to the TO127 package that I was actually using. So what I did was I just redid the two boards desoldered all of the components, refabricated the boards, and after testing the components, reused them. And so what we have is this board, and it's a sister board, the same thing, with four changes that are really minor. The first change is I got rid of the low-profile IC socket. I used the IC socket when I started blowing up ICs, and I figured it would be easier just to stick a new IC into the socket and continue the process until I figured out what was wrong, which eventually I did. It was a, a sloppy use of a digital multimeter probe uh, that shorted pin 6 to pin 7, the VREF to ground, and roasted the chip. I got rid of that socket. and In general, I don't like using sockets. They are just another point of failure, another place where corrosion can muck up the connection between IC pin and the socket, another place where vibration can loosen a connection. It's, the IC isn't going to pop out because of vibration, but the connection to a pin can loosen up enough to affect the resistance between the IC pin and its socket. So I don't like using these sockets in general, and where possible, try to avoid it. Second change was at the original board, I had a 47-ohm resistor. I was biasing the MJE3055 power transistor mounted vertically, and since there was room, I decided I wanted to mount it horizontally in this version. The vertical mounting was just getting in my way, and I kept bending the contacts and thought that I would perhaps break a contact for that resistor and not realize it. The third modification to the printed circuit board was fabricating the board to accommodate the actual footprint of a TO-127 package. I have yet to see a spec sheet for a TO-127 for MJE-3055. I was able to find a, a spec sheet for a TO-126, which is a slightly smaller package. The leads are in the same order and are in the same sequence. And finally, I uh, tin-plated the copper. And this really isn't a change that affects the electronics so much. 
Some people claim that it's easier to solder on a tin-plated trace. I don't find that true, but what happens is that after a week or two, the tin plating dulls up, and it's much more difficult to notice the pitting on the traces that result from using a laser printer toner as a resist. So I'm going to fire up the uh, prototyping system. Internally, the output of the rectifier built filter boards is connected to the first two binding posts. Let me lift off the breadboarding socket matrix. It's not needed here. And connect the positive binding post to the positive terminal of the digital multimeter. Connect the negative binding post to the common of the digital multimeter. Prop this up with a screwdriver in behind here. And turn this thing on. And let's power it up, and I should get somewhere between 28 and 29 volts. 28.35, as I recall. 28.18. Uh, Going up. 28.25. Twenty-eight point three zero. Twenty-eight point three five. Shut it off quick before it hits six. Quickly, shut it off. Come on. Uh, don't notice that. All right. So I'm getting an output from the prototyping system rectifier filter board of twenty-eight point three five. Now I'm going to put an old mouse pad on the prototyping system's top panel. It's not really so much to do with insulation as it has with providing a surface that people stuff isn't going to slide and roll off. Now we'll put the new variable positive power supply board on top. Connecting the negative input to the negative binding post, which is internally connected to the rectifier filter board negative. Red banana plug on the digital multimeter positive to an alligator clip. Then the red banana plug cable connected to the positive binding post. Also getting an alligator clip, and this is going to be the switch. Now let's power up the prototyping system. Connect the rectifier filter board output to the positive power supply and, and connect the digital multimeter to the output. And let's see if I in fact have a variable positive power supply. It seems to be variable. 20, okay. Slightly, slowly adjusting. The maximum that I'm able to get in this configuration is 25.68 volts, which is fine. It exceeds my initial requirements of 20 volts. And we're going to lower this thing slowly. I want to see that this thing is indeed adjustable and stable. And it appears to be. Nine volts is a good place, uh, going lower. And the lowest I can get out of this is not quite zero. 0.459. Okay, I've thought about this and I decided that that's low enough. If the new product doesn't meet its requirements, there's only one thing to do and that is change the requirements. But realistically, in recent memory, I've never used a power supply below 0.8. I use 0.8 volts as the lowest voltage that is usable out of a set of paralleled alkaline batteries, double A's. And once I hit 0.8, I need to do an orderly shutdown of uh, whatever it is I'm developing. Last thing I was doing was uh, sensor packages for a botany experiment. And when the thing hit 0.8, it's time to close down all the files, shut off the sensors, and, and shut the whole package down. But uh, I can't, uh, can't recall using anything lower out of a power supply.
This is not a voltage reference. If it were, well, I can think of a number of uses for very low voltages, one or two microvolts, but not for a power supply, so this is acceptable. Now, let me go through some review, primarily for my own purposes. What am I trying to do here? Well, I'm developing a prototyping system aimed at facilitating the prototyping of circuits so that when you get an idea, you can go more easily from the idea to an implementation of it. I partitioned that system into a number of functional components, and right now I'm working on the power supply. Now, looking at the power supply, we have AC power, which is done, rectifying and filtering functions, which are done, and then the external supplies are going to be used to power the various circuits being prototyped. Now, as for external supplies, there is a standalone variable positive power supply going from 0 to plus 20 volts at 500 milliamps, and that's what we just completed. Next is a dual supply. This uh, supply is a complementary supply where you have a variable positive power supply that is adjustable from 0 to 20 volts also from, at 500 milliamps, but also includes a tracking negative supply. The negative supply tracks its connected positive supply at 500 milliamps. Now let's take a look at the functionality of this tracking negative supply. It follows its associated positive supply, so if the variable positive power supply is adjusted to 5 volts, tracking negative supply outputs minus 5. If the variable positive power supply uh, is adjusted to 10 volts, tracking negative supply outputs minus 10 volts. But it's more than that. Someone turns on the air conditioner and the associated variable positive power supply goes down by 1 millivolt. The tracking negative supply will go up by 1 millivolt such that the sum of the voltages coming out of the positive supply and the negative supply equal uh, the reference zero, the common. Now let me take a look at this dual supply a bit more closely, diagrammatically. We have a transformer secondary. And you can look at this as a split secondary, both ends of which are going into rectifier filter module, which produces a positive voltage, a common, and a negative voltage. Now for this dual supply, we have a variable positive power supply. It inputs the positive from the rectifier filter module, and it is attached to the common. And it produces a positive voltage depending on the adjustment of the potentiometer. Add on to this the tracking negative power supply. The tracking negative supply is connected to the common and to the negative output of the rectifier filter module. It also inputs the output of the variable positive supply so that it can track the variable positive supply as a inverting amplifier. So whatever the variable positive supply produces, the tracking negative supply produces the uh, inversion or negative of that. There's one more connection that I guess should be diagrammed, and that is a connection between the rectifier filter module positive and the tracking negative regulator, and that is a necessity due to the component used. In the next video, we will design the tracking negative power supply. If you like this video and the idea of the channel, click on the YouTube thumbs up icon. If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, make corrections to published videos, or voice your opinion on related matters, then leave a YouTube comment. If you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form, such as high res graphics, files in different formats, lists of references, uh, go to the corresponding website. Until next time, good day.